Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to see you all here. So today's video is going to be about integration again. But today we are going to talk about integrating single cell RNA-seq data from different conditions. And unlike last time, we are going to use a different method. So we are going to use Harmony today to integrate uh, single cell RNA-seq data. We have previously seen this list of batch correction methods and in our previous integration video, we used uh, Sirat's uh, canonical correlation analysis method to integrate data to correct for the batch effects. But today we are going to use Harmony and just to give a little idea about how Harmony works. Harmony uses a, uh, an iterative clustering method which ensures that cells in each cluster come from as many batches as possible in each iteration. So basically it is maximizing the diversity of batches in each cluster. And, and then it calculates a correction factor for each cell uh, to be applied. So essentially it repeats this process iteratively and refines in each iteration until it converges. I will be adding the link to the Harmony paper in the description below. So if anyone is interested in a comprehensive explanation and how the algorithm is set up, I encourage you to read the Harmony paper. I want to point out a major difference between Harmony and Serrat's method. So in our previous integration video, we used Serrat's canonical correlation analysis method to integrate the datasets where it essentially identifies anchors in each dataset and uses those anchors to uh, integrate the dataset. And Serrat returns an integrated object. So this object holds the batch corrected uh, values, expression values for all cells. Uh, but in case of Harmony, Harmony only computes the corrected um, dimensionality reduction values it does not calculate the corrected expression values. So it does not return any integrated object and neither does the raw data, data or the scale data slots get altered. These uh, corrected dimensionality reduction uh, values are called embeddings. And we'll talk more about these embeddings and how to use them in the tutorial part of this video. Just to add a quick note, uh, since uh, I have been talking about these uh, or some of these methods as batch correction methods uh, it does not mean that these methods can only be used to correct for batch effects um, uh, this batch of correction method is not in literal sense it means uh, these methods can be used to take care of intersample variation and this uh, intersample variation can uh, be can, can occur due to differences in uh, sequencing technology or experimental conditions or um, sequencing batch effects. Uh, so batch correction here is not in literal sense and I'm going to use Harmony to uh, not correct for the batch effects in this case, but to use them, uh, use this method to um, integrate data from different conditions. So today we are uh, going to use a data set that is a lupus data set. Uh, so lupus is an autoimmune disease and it impacts the function of immune system and uh, causing the immune system to attack the body's organs and tissues. So the data set today we have is uh, peripheral blood mononuclear cells from eight lupus patients, uh, which are split into stimulated and control group. And the stimulated group is treated with interferon beta. Uh, the goal of the study uh, was to assess the cell type specific changes in gene expression with uh, interferon beta treatment. But the goal of our uh, analysis today is to integrate data by conditions to overlay the cells that are similar in both the conditions. These are our requirements for today. So we are going to use Harmony uh, or rather Harmony's wrapper function which takes uh, SIRAR objects or single cell experiment objects directly. We are also going to use uh, Serrat data. So the data that we are using today is accessible via this package. And this package allows us to access data sets that have been used in Serrat's vignettes. So this data set uh, is used in Serrat's integration vignette where they use Serrat's method uh, to integrate the data. But we are going to use the same data today and use a different integration method. Uh, and apart from that, we have the usual packages uh, that we are going to use, uh, the Serrat, uh, Tidyverse and ggplot2. So let's switch screens to our studio to get started. Let us start by loading our libraries. So we are going to use uh, the data from Sira data package. Uh, before we install the data, if you want to see what are the available data sets, there is a function called available data. And when you run this, you get the information on what the data sets are available, uh, the descriptions, uh, the species they come from, um, the system, the versions, uh, you get all of that information. So we are interested in this data set, which is our interferon beta data set. Um, so we are going to use this data set name to install the data. So to install the data, we will type 
install data and the name of the data set and we run this. I've already run this and hence it gives me the warning that is already installed. Uh, so now let's load the data. So to in order to load the data set, we type load data and again the name of the data set. So this is the uh, Serat object. It contains uh, these many features and these many cells. So if you want to take a look at this object, we can type str and the name of the object. The name of the object is ifnb, the name of the data set. So this is our Serat object and it has the counts and a um, bunch of information there. It has some metadata as well. Looking at the object, I can say that this is not a process data uh, because we do not have any information or data in the scale data slot. We have no variable features identified. Uh, we have no reduction methods performed uh, because there, are, there is no data in these slots. So it looks like this data is not um, uh, processed. So let's uh, start by processing this data. So we perform all the standard workflow steps, including the pre-processing steps like QC and filtering. And we perform the standard workflow steps first, visualize whether the data separates out by condition, and then we run harmony and integrate the data. Let's start by calculating the mitochondrial uh, percentage reads in each cell. So we can assign a new variable, mito percent, and use percentage feature set provide the name of the object and pattern which starts with D and we run this so I have an error which says unused argument because I have not spelled pattern correctly and now let's take a look at the metadata So we can see for each cell, we have the mitochondrial um, read percentage calculator for each cell. It seems that most of the cells or almost all cells have no mitochondrial reads. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of the QC. So I encourage you to explore the QC before you set the thresholds to filter your cells. So I know what thresholds I want to use. So I'm just going to um, run the filtering here so i'm going to subset my cells and use the object and provide the uh, filtering thresholds so i want uh, to keep all the cells that have transcript counts over 800 and keeping all the cells with number of genes greater than 200 and keeping all the cells with mitochondrial percentage less than 5%. So now let's run this. So now that the filtering has finished running, uh, let's see, we started with almost 14,000 cells. And after filtering, we are not quite short of that many uh, cells. We have almost, we have barely filtered out like 11 cells. I think we have retained most cells, which indicates that our, the data is extremely good quality because it passes these uh, filtering thresholds. Um, so now that we have filtered our da uh, data, we next move on to um, visualizing our data because we want to see how the cells group by condition. And for that, we need to run uh, some steps, which are uh, standard workflow steps. So we start by normalizing our data and we run all the steps until nonlinear dimensionality reduction, that is UMAP, because we essentially want to see our um, data visualized in a low dimensional space. So let's start by normalizing data and we'll be using the filtered data here and we reassign it back to the filtered data. Next, we find variable features. After variable features, we scale data. After scaling, we run linear dimensionality reduction, that is PCA. Let's find the dimensionality of our data using an elbow plot. So I'm going to plot and create an elbow plot. 
and quickly taking a look at this plot so um, it seems that the first 15 principal components uh, captures the majority of the variation but I'm still going to err on the higher side and I'm just going to consider all the 20 so I'm going to use all the first 20 dimensions to uh, for my UMAP so we run nonlinear dimensionality reduction using first 20 dimensions and the reduction that I'm going to use here is the PCA reduction saving it back to the filtered object so now that our UMAP has finished running um, let's uh, create a dimensional plot so I'm using the filtered object the reduction I'm be using here is the UMAP and before I go ahead, I want to group by the conditions. So I want to group by the condition, but I want to see what, where the condition, which column the condition name is stored in. So it seems the stem column here has the condition information. So I'm going to use that column to group my cells by. So we run this and zooming in on the UMAP here, the cells when grouped by condition are clearly separating out uh, as per the conditions. So since these are peripheral blood mononuclear cells from uh, before and after treatment, there should be cells similar in uh, both the conditions, uh, so in both the groups. And hence we need to overlay the groups similar to each other so we can perform further downstream analysis. So let's use harmony to integrate uh, these cells and overlay the similar cells. The Harmony steps that I will be running are uh, taken from the Harmony vignette and I will be adding the link to that vignette in the description below. So as I said, we will be running Harmony using the uh, Harmony's wrapper function that is run Harmony, which takes the input as the Serrat object. So let's start with the Serrat object and provide it to the run Harmony function. And within the run harmony function, we need to define the group by variable, uh, meaning the variable by with using which we want to um, integrate the data. So in this case, we want to do it by condition, which is stored in the stem um, column. And I do not want to plot the convergence. So I'm going to set it as false. And now I'm going to assign this to a new um, uh, object called um, the name of the uh, data set and harmony so I can recognize that this has the um, harmony output so essentially this command will return um, the corrected uh, dimensionality values and these are called embeddings so once this finishes running I want to show you how to uh, take a look at these embeddings now that the harmony has finished running I want to show you where the results get saved so I'm going to take a look at the uh, harmony object and go to the reduction slot. And when I run this, you will be able to see that in addition to uh, the subslot PCA and UMAP, you can also see the harmony embeddings being saved into separate uh, subslot, uh, which is called harmony. So anytime we want to access or use the uh, reductions, uh, harmony reductions, we will specify harmony in the reduction parameter. Just like in the dim plot, we uh, mention the reduction as UMAP. So it knows where to take the UMAP values or the reductions from. So similarly, uh, henceforth, we will be using harmony reductions to perform the UMAP and the clustering. So before we jump onto that, I want to show you how to get the embeddings. So there is a function called embeddings where we provide it with the name of our object. And we also provide the name of the, uh, the reduction. And in this case, it's harmony. And I want to save this as harmony embeddings and want to run this. So now let's take a look at this um, object so you can see that uh, we have harmony embedding values for each cell and there are multiple harmony um, just like we have multiple principal components uh, we have multiple harmony uh, components here 
Now using these uh, harmony embedding values, we will perform nonlinear dimensionality reduction that is UMAP and we will perform uh, downstream analysis like clustering. So let's start by our harmony object and run UMAP. Here we provide the reduction as harmony because we want to use the harmony embeddings. And the dimension of the data set remains the same. That is the first 20 principal components. And then we want to find neighbors. Again, here we want to use the reduction as harmony. And the dimension of the data set remains the first 20 principal components. And finally, we want to find clusters. And I want to use the resolution as 0.5. And now let's assign it back to the harmony object and now let's run this now that this is finished running let's visualize our data uh, using a dimension plot so we will be using our harmony object and the reduction we'll be using here is umap we are using umap here because this umap reductions are calculated using the harmony reductions so we are using essentially the updated uh, umap uh, values and we want to group uh, the cells by the condition which is stored in the stem column and now when we run this i'm going to zoom in on the plot here uh, we can see that cells from both the conditions uh, overlay well over each other and they do not separate out due to uh, conditions and this is exactly what we were uh, wanting to do with the integration so it looks like our integration has um, run successfully so now let's create a before and after plot. So this is going to be my after plot and I'm going to save it into the after variable. Just scrolling up to the previous dimension plot which was created using the filter object. I'm going to save it into a before variable so we can visualize them side by side. So let's visualize them side by side using the pipe operator. And just zooming in on the final result. This is what we started with uh, on the left hand side uh, where cells separated out due to conditions and the plot on the right is what we achieved using integration where cells that are common or similar in both the conditions overlaid over each other. So that's all I had for this video. Uh, in the next video, I plan to use this data, this integrated data and demonstrate some downstream analysis like finding markers and cluster identification. So please stay tuned for my next video. Coming back to this video, I will be adding the links to all the resources papers as well as the link to my GitHub where I upload my code in the description below. So please make sure you check that out. If you found this video helpful and informative, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like the video, share it and leave your comments under the comment section. Until next time, see you.